on the mathematics side, what, uh, if you look back, or maybe today, what made you fall in love with mathematics? For me, I think I've always been very attracted to challenge, as, as I already indicated with the, writing the program. I guess if I see something that's hard or supposed to be impossible, it certain sometimes I say, maybe, maybe I want to see if I can pull that off. And with the mathematics, the math competitions presented problems that were hard, that I didn't know how to start, but for which I could conceivably try to learn how to solve them. Mm. So, I mean, there are other things that are hard called like get something to Mars, get people to Mars. Yeah. And I didn't, and I still don't think that I'm able to solve that problem. On the other hand, the math problems struck me as things which are hard and with significant amount of extra work, I could figure it out. And maybe they would actually even be useful. Like that, that mathematical skill is the core of lots of other things. That's really interesting. Maybe you could speak to that because a lot of people say that math is hard as a kind of negative statement. It always seemed to me a little bit like that's kind of a positive statement that all things that are worth having in this world are hard. I mean, everything that people think about that they would love to do, whether it's sports, whether it's art, music, and all the sciences, it, they're going to be hard if you want to do something special. So is there something you could say to that idea that math is hard? Should it be made easy or should it be hard? Ah, so I think maybe I want to dig in a little bit onto this hard part and, and say, uh, I think the interesting thing about the math is that you can see a question that you didn't know how to start doing it before. And over a course of thinking about it, you can come up with a way to, to solve it. And so you can move from a state of not being able to do something to a state of being able to do something where you help to take yourself through that mm -hmm. instead of somebody else spoon feeding you yes. that technique. So actually here I'm already digging into maybe part of my teaching philosophy also, yes. which is that I actually don't want to ever just tell somebody, here's how you do something. I actually prefer to say, here's an interesting question. I know you don't quite know how to do it. Do you have any ideas? I, this is, I'm actually coming up with, I'm actually explaining another way that you could try to do teaching. Mm -hmm. And I'm contrasting this to a method of watch me do this, now practice it 20 times. I'm trying to say a lot of people consider math to be hard because maybe they can't remember all of the methods that were taught. But for me, I look at the hardness and I don't think of it as a memory hardness. I think of it as a, can you invent something hardness? And I think that if we can teach more people how to do that art of invention in a pure cognitive way, not as hard as the actual hardware stuff, mm -hmm. right? But like in terms of the concepts and the thoughts and the mathematics, teaching people how to invent, then suddenly, actually, they might not even find math to be that tiresomeness hard anymore, right. but that rewardingness hard of, I have the capability of looking at something which I don't know what to do and coming up with how to do it. I actually think we should be doing that, giving giving people that capability. So hard in the same way that invention is hard, that is ultimately rewarding. So maybe you can dig in that a little bit longer, which is, um, do you see basically the way to teach math is to present a problem and to give a person a chance to try to invent a solution without with minimal amount of information first? Is that, is, is that basically, how do you build that muscle of invention in a student? Yes, so the way that, I, I, I guess I have two different sort of ways that I try to teach. Actually, one of them is, in fact, this semester because all my classes were uh, remotely delivered. I even threw them all onto my YouTube channel. So you can, awesome. see, you can see how I teach at Carnegie Mellon. But I'd often say, hey, everyone, let's try to do this. Any ideas? And that actually changes my role as a professor from a person who shows up for class with a script of what I want to talk through. I actually, I don't have a script. The way I show up for class is there's something that we want to learn how to do, and we're going to do it by improv. I, I'm talking about the same method as improv comedy, mm -hmm. which is where you tell me some ideas and I'll try to yes and them. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then together, we're going to come up with a proof of this concept where you were deeply involved in creating the proof 
Actually, every time I teach the class, we do every proof slightly differently mm -hmm. because it's based on how the students came up with it. And the way, that, that's how I do it when I'm in person. I also have another line of courses that we make that is delivered online. Those things are where I can't do it live, but uh, the, the teaching method became also similar. It was just, here's an interesting question. I know it's out of reach. Why don't you think about it? And then automatic hints, we feed automatic hints uh, through, you know, through the internet to go and let the person try to invent. So that's like a more rigorous prodding of invention. 